Secretaries are not here, 16th Presidential Circle in Hampton. I have read thoroughly the uh, Wright Pierce report. It's a 200 page report. I went over it every page, every line in detail. I'm not done with my analysis, but I have read the report. Some items I'd like to bring out. Ventilation throughout appears over and over and over again. I see no no sense of putting new equipment into areas that aren't ventilated. So I think we got to hit ventilation as a priority before we put new equipment in this place. Second of all, we have to continue the plan to reduce infiltration and inflow. That stuff coming in from bad pipes or sewer covers or whatever. It's making up 56 of our, 56 percent of our water flow into the plant per table 2-4 uh, of this uh, and years 2012 through 16 per, per this uh, report. So continue to work infiltration and I like their recommendation of what they think that might cost us on a yearly basis. The aeration process, I see that as critical and Achilles heel. This process was changed in 2003 from the uh, original design to a new modified aeration process. When that was changed, the limits were changed. Millions of gallons of dray dropped from 4.7 to 3.9, and the TTS and BOD dropped as well. Right now, we are at the limits, if not exceeding, these two parameters, and we stand the risk of the state intervening and having to review every single permit of water going into that plant right now. That needs to be reviewed one way or the other. Either go back to the original design and add some processes in there that would accommodate the pH and, pH and other factors, or take the existing process, which is ganged together, and you can't clean any tanks or repair them, and add more tanks. But someone's got to be there in a hurry. <clears throat> industrial suppliers. We need to supply, we need to control our industrial suppliers tighter than we have. We have a major guy on the block, we know who they are, who's been delivering a lot of uh, solids to the plant. That has to be controlled through constant visits, constant validating that they're sampling, and constantly validating that they're living to their pre-treatment requirements. If not, problem will not go away. And we can hit them with a uh, surcharge fee. I love that. That's another recommendation, right, right, Pierce. I agree that defective parts need to be replaced. I agree that parts needing repair are repaired. I agree that parts that are at or near end of life be replaced on a priority basis, of course. I agree that the identified safety problems be corrected. What are the costs of these that I just said? I don't know. Table 4.1 on page 427 talks about 35 million bucks. I don't know a thing about that $35 million. I hope it's not all building costs because they have mentioned putting a new grit building in, putting a new septics building in, putting a new operation building in or expanding it, and correcting the maintenance garage and expanding it. Right now, I'm talking about fixing things, not building buildings. I don't know what 4.1 page 4-27 says. It's 35 million, I think, out of the 41 that Chris Jacobs was talking about. I have no idea. I can't comment on that until I know. Okay, and lastly, there is a risk the current permit is five years past due. The risk is that they give us another permit down the road, if you will, and it now requires us metals to be reduced or anything else, blah, blah, blah. It might require more space and another process. That's all. I'm just bringing this up. It's a risk, especially copper and some of the metals, aluminum, whatever. So we have to have a plan. We have to go forward. It has to be a prudent one. I'm for spending money, but it has to be prudent. I have read this report thoroughly. I have not finished my analysis, but... These are the things I have seen. Thank you very much for your three minutes. <laughs> I hope I met it. <laughs> uh, almost. <laughs> Thanks. I timed it on my microwave. All I right. It by 20 <laughs>